she um, really was a great innovator and totally original. I'm Claire Freestone, I'm one of the curators in the photographs department here at the gallery and also the curator lucky enough to be working on the Yvonne exhibition. Yvonne is quite hard to sum up because she was so fabulous. Um, she's a 20th century photographer, a pioneer in colour photography in the 1930s. Um, she was also a suffragette, um, she really fought for women's rights and she had a 60 year career. We acquired her separation negative archive in 2021. So we had this amazing rich resource of material that either hadn't been seen for a very long time or in some cases not at all. So we wanted to reevaluate her practice. My name is Ines Alves. I'm a digitization officer at the gallery. Uh, my work uh, includes digitizing either by scanning or photography parts of the permanent collection and also scanning key works of the Madame Yvonne archive supported by the Chanel Cultural Fund. Color separation cameras as a three color camera used by Yvonne allow to expose a set of three negatives through color filters and this originates three different black and white negatives. In this case we have blue, red and yellow and when you superimpose these different negatives one on top of another you have a color image. So after the negatives have been numbered and clean, we uh, proceeded with the scanning of the Avon works and then we align each negative one on top of each other and make sure the registration is achieved. The gallery commissioned Catiun to make some colour carbon prints for the exhibition. Um, colour carbon prints are the closest thing that we could find that mimicked the Vivex colour process that Yvonne used in the 1930s, which was a factory process actually. Um, but Catiun is making these wonderful handcrafted prints for us. I'm a printmaker, photographer and um, public artist. So I have a very diverse approach to my work. At the heart of everything I do is photography. So the portrait we're looking at today is a self-portrait of Yvonne. It's a very beautiful direct image. So in carbon printing um, you have a quite complex preparation process. When you're doing tricolour carbon, it's essentially a three transfer process. So you transfer the image three times. First transfer is directly onto the colour pigment tissues. The second transfer is onto a temporary support, which is on paper, which has lots of soft gelatin on it. At this stage, the image is in reverse. The third transfer happens onto the final papers, which also has gelatin on it as a, as a substrate but that's hardened in order to receive the image. That's three sets of materials that have to be prepared. To print a carbon image, um, one has to use three colour tissues. Uh, the yellow, uh, a blue-green, which is kind of like a modern cyan, and a red, which is we call a magenta. When I started this whole process, I created a sample print uh, for the National Portrait Gallery. I used modern colours and I was struggling to achieve with uh, cyan, magenta and yellow enough depth and black and contrast. So I started to expand my colour range by looking at historic colours and doing some research in terms of what colours were used in the print industry and in the photography industry from the 1930s. So the yellow is not your bright yellow of today. It's much dirtier, uh, darker, and the blue-green is much more green than you'd expect, and the red has got much more red as in a traditional red color in it. Each um, pigment tissue, starting with the yellow, has uh, a negative, um, sandwich to it. This is placed into the ultraviolet uh, light box with uh, the vacuum table so the two are sandwiched together as tight as possible. 
Once the exposure has been completed, the image is taken uh, into water. The pigment tissue is then left to rest for five minutes. Once the five minute resting is complete, with a layer of water on the polyester support on the table, I adhere the tissue to it and squeegee that out. It's left to rest for 15 minutes to glue together really well. The image is then developed in hot water. Once the developing starts to take place, the soft gelatin will ooze from the edges and you have a signifier there that you can then remove the back of the tissue layer. And then you start to move it uh, by taking it out of the water and back in the water and creating a waterfall effect on the surface to take away the residue of the gelatin. I then go into a second hot water bath and once it's completely clear, I then leave it to hang. Once that's dry, it's flashed in the ultraviolet light box so that any residual diazo, which is a sensitizer, is then exhausted. By this point, we repeat the process all the way through for the red and all the way through with the blue-green as the final colour. So once you have your composite image, all three layers on top, you're able then to do the final flashing and, and clearing of the diazo and you're able then to take it to the second stage, which is transferring it to a temporary support. As it dries, it literally just pulls off the image. So you've then got on that glossy surface your full image. You're then able to do the very final transfer because remember at this stage, the image is in reverse. You've got the yellow layer sitting on the top surface. To do the final transfer, you have already prepared fine art paper. Once that paper is ready, I'm then going to bind the two together. And after an hour, this sandwich, you're able to develop it effectively in hot water. So the image is effectively transferred one onto the other. I've just so enjoyed engaging with Yvonne's images. She had a very unique talent for composing images and working with colour. Working in this way and observing her processes has really taught me a lot about actually what you can do with colour to really make the most of it and to create the most dramatic compositions.